The audio and speech process begins um, with script writers. So we send out all the parameters, what we need from them, and they return the scripts. It doesn't stop there. You have to go through an awful lot of reviews. So we've got up to about 10,000 lines, which is huge. Then once we're in the studio, the fun part starts. That's the play that's tied the score. Tied it up like a double bowline on a sheep shank. It can be tedious. There's no doubt about it. You have to say things over and over and over and over and over again. You get the idea. This is more, um, you know, scripted and more almost like acting. Despite fading a little, they grabbed the win by two. You nailed it there, Jim. I mean, you really have an eye for this game. Don, that's kind of why I got this job. Makes sense. One of the interesting things that's happened to this game is in, in Canada, people know me as a real hockey broadcaster and say, oh, you also do that electronic arts game. I run across people in America now that I work with and hear my voice and say, I didn't know you did the real thing. You're the guy from the video game. Jim, there was a performance that makes you say, wow. Definitely gone. Well, wow. Thank you, Jim. As opposed to working with a very serious color commentator, it's fun to work with a guy who's got a sense of humor. And Jim, their final goal was just the chutney on the samosa. Here is Don Taylor. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Don Taylor. Welcome to Sports Set for Primetime. Well, a couple years ago, I guess some of the guys from EA saw me doing a half-hour sports show, and they asked me if I wanted to be part of this project, and I said, you darn right, I'd love to. We're having a blast. Hoo-bah! <laughs> Look at all the penalties these guys will be serving, Jim. Not exactly the way to win games, eh, Don? Ooh, you're right. You know, the audio is a very important part of the game. Um, you know, they are trying to capture what, what we feel as players. We hear fans yelling at us, we hear coaches, our other teammates, you know, yelling for the puck and fans yelling at us to shoot. So these are things that, um, that they're implementing in the game and trying to make it even more realistic and it helps to make a, a great game. One of the reasons that speech sounds so good in our game is because of the technology that we use called stitching and that basically takes a bunch of different separate sound files puts them together to create sentences such as Burre passes to Flurry or Burre passes to Lindros. Uh, the way we get John the PA announcer in the game is uh, you know he comes over and reads scripts uh, it's a lot less challenging to get his source because we don't have to stitch what he says but he's the guy that you hear last minute of play in the second period last minute of play in the second period once Jim and Don have finished their recording session, we got all their data basically on hard drive. The amount of files that we're managing in speech for, for sports games is in the tens of thousands. So it's tedious work to edit all of them. Oh, I spilled hot coffee on my legs. Those are my legs. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So it's quite a bit of grueling work, but it's what you got to do to get it to sound great. Well, I'm impressed. My favorite things about the NHL series of games is just the fast-paced, furious gameplay. This year the manual deke is just going to be blown out. The exciting new addition to it is the, the Game Breaker. We have made the goaltenders a heck of a lot better. The big changes that we've made for 2003 over 2002 is we've spent a lot of time and concentration on gameplay. We've now allowed the users to physically feel like they're controlling the puck on the stick. And you can physically move the stick back and forth and it feels like you have more control over the player now. Deking is when you, you move the stick left and right and make moves on your opponent. And by doing this you'll build up points and you fill up your, your deking meter. And when this happens, you can trigger this moment that slows down time. It's like being in the zone and you get to see the play develop in front of you and you get to capitalize on that. When we play hockey, you do, you break away and if you're on a, on a break and, you, and it's you and the goalie, it does seem like time stops. It's, it seems that you know you, you bear down and you don't hear anything else and this is a feature they're putting in the game. You can choose to go top corner, five hole, and you can see this up close. They have a lot of different deeks and this is something that makes it even more real, you know, as close as you can. And what we see when we go in our break, it, it'll be a, a great addition to the game this year. I work on the artificial intelligence. Uh, it's everything that has to do with making the players play like real hockey player. He does a lot of unexpected things, so we really just have to figure out how we can make the AI play around the music. Well, the way
way we decide how goals go in in our game is we sort of evaluate from, from both angles. We look at the shooter and his abilities and what sort of hockey situation is he in, if he's in a good scoring situation or if he's taking a poor shot. And then we look at the attributes of the goalie and how well prepared the goalie is for the shot. So we try and capture a lot of the essence of a real shooter-goalie duel. Some of the key uh, improvements to the goalie this year is we try to expand the number of poses so the goalie goes into a variety of styles of butterfly. See a lot more spectacular saves, desperation saves, goalies diving, rolling, spinning. That'll add a lot to the excitement of the game and should make it a lot more like the, the real NHL kind of part. Gamers are gonna love it. When I see her eyes.